I love photographing waterfalls. There's something just so serene about watching the water cascade across a, a cliff and then see how it affects the rocks and everything below and all the mossy green that you can see in the area. When I lived in the Pacific Northwest, there were so many waterfalls and I got to see a bunch of them. And this one in particular, Steep Creek Falls, was right off of the road. It was really easy to find. Because it was right off of the road, literally, there weren't a lot of opportunities to photograph the entire thing. I'm actually standing on a bridge that takes you over to the waterfall or, you know, where you can park for the waterfall. And I'm photographing these little shots right here. This is probably one of the best actual photos of the waterfall itself. I didn't go too wide because there's too much stuff around. And if you see up here in the corner, there's like these sticks that are kind of flailing around and those kinds of things you don't really want in your shot when you're doing this kind of thing. So I decided to walk around and walk to the other side of the road to find some other small details of the water, the runoff water from this waterfall. And one of the really cool things about this waterfall was the blue, there's like this bright blue water coming from below. And I'm not sure what was causing it, but it was absolutely gorgeous. So I found this series of rocks and I kind of played around with a few of the different compositions. Now the initial one you can see, I, I didn't really notice the stick in the way. And sometimes you don't catch these things until it's too late. There were also a lot of little sticks over here on the left. And so I think I saw it a little bit better once I got a clear shot of my long exposure. So I moved in a little bit closer and I found that I really liked this composition better. But uh, one thing I didn't like about it was that these two rocks right here were touching. I mean, they weren't actually touching, but in my frame, they're overlapping. And I don't really like to do that. If at all possible, I like to keep things separated. So I moved over uh, just a little bit and I got this scene and this is the frame that I absolutely loved from all of these shots. So this is the shorter exposure. It's only one sixth of a second, whereas this is 171 seconds. I used an ND filter, very likely the 10 stop ND to really cut down the light and allow me to blur the water and have a very long shutter speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the develop module with this image and we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna click D to get over to the develop module. And I'll start at the top. I'll start in the basic panel. First, I'm going to kind of play with my temperature, warm it up a little bit. It seems a little too cool for my taste. And that was just a really, really subtle uh, adjustment. Do a quick before and after of that, and it's a really, really subtle adjustment. I'm also gonna play around with my exposure, bring that up quite a bit, because it gets kind of dark. Sometimes when you're photographing a long exposure, the scene, you know, you want to get it as bright as possible without blowing any of the whites out and, you know, making them pure white and losing detail in them. Uh, but you also can't anticipate for the light changes. If you're doing a two or three minute exposure, sometimes the light changes. And if the light fades away, your photograph will be a little underexposed. So oftentimes I have to compensate for that inside of Lightroom. I'm also going to play around with my contrast setting. Let's see what highlights is gonna do. I don't wanna deaden my highlights. I actually kinda like my highlights being kinda bright. I'm gonna toggle real quickly. I'm gonna click J to toggle my clipping notifications. And I don't have anything clipped right now. You can see just by looking at the histogram, nothing is butting up against that right or really that left. So I'm good right now, but I'll keep that active just in case I push something a little too far down the road. I'm gonna go ahead and deepen those shadows a little bit. Again, I'm gonna increase the whites. Now, if I don't wanna to go too far, cause you can see if I push those whites too far, then it starts to clip them. So I really just wanna push them just a little bit, just a little far. <laughs> and I'm going to bring this black sound, kind of make it a little bit more contrasty. I'll also add some vibrance, not too much though, you know, cause if I push it too far, it just gets a little neon and kind of gross. So I'll bring it to maybe 35 or so. And then I'm gonna bring my saturation down. And that means I can push my vibrance up. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick toggle. I'm gonna to click that backslash key to toggle the before and the after. And see a nice change is happening. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast with the tone curve. Uh, I'm not really gonna do much other than just change the point curve to medium contrast. It adds a nice little pop, you know, deepens those blacks. So I really like doing that with a lot of my images. And next I'm gonna go into split toning and have a little fun with this. 
I'm going to do a warm highlight. And let's see, I'll kind of move that up maybe 30 or so. It looks kind of funny right now, doesn't it? But it'll change as soon as I add a cool shadow. And that's a little too much. I'll keep it there, but I think I'm going to play around with my balance and see what that's going to do. All right, so the balance is really just going to say, if I push it to the left, it's going to increase those shadows. You're going to have more shadow effect than highlight effect. Push it to the right, vice versa. So I'm going to push it to the left a little bit, and I'm going to toggle back and forth, see what we got going on. I think I like it. I'm going to go with this, and I'm actually going to take this into Photoshop to do some finishing touches on this. So I'm going to go to Command-E, and it's going to pop open inside of Photoshop. Okay, so first I'll hit F to just kind of make it full screen. I always like to work without seeing through to the background. I always kind of like to have a little bit of a minimalistic approach and focus in. I can get distracted really easily, so it's good for me to do that. First thing I need to do is clone out this icky looking stick over here. I could have tried it in Lightroom, but that's, this seems like it's a little too complicated for Lightroom, so I'm going to go ahead and work it in Photoshop. I added a brand new layer. I'm going to go ahead and double click that and just change the name to Clone. I'm going to zoom in. If I hold Command Option 0, it's going to give me at 100%. On a PC, you can do Control Alt 0, it should do the same thing. And then I'm going to go over to my Stamp Tool on the left. So you have your Stamp Tool. Don't use the Pattern Stamp Tool. Make sure you're in the Stamp Tool. And I think I'm going to go ahead and risk 100% opacity. Oftentimes when I'm cloning, I will clone at a lower opacity, but I don't have a lot of crazy things happening. It's really a lot of straight lines, so I should be able to accomplish this just with uh, maybe one or two different samples. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the size a little bit. I don't need it too big. I don't want to go too much bigger than the actual thing that I'm cloning. Hold my Option key to sample an area. Click over here, and you can see I have it set so that I can actually see that overlay, and I'm just going to click. I'm going to sample again. The key to getting really realistic uh, cloning and healing is to sample very frequently and uh, use sample from different locations. You know, you don't want to just do one whoosh, swipe all the way down, or you're very likely to make it look like it was cloned out. So that looks pretty nice, and I'll go ahead and zoom out and toggle that layer. By the way, uh, I added on a separate layer so it retains the editability and you know that way I don't actually mess anything up unintentionally. And when you're doing this, you just want to make sure that you have current and below selected. If you have current layer, it's not going to make any difference if you're doing it on a separate layer. It's, it's only going to be trying to clone uh, from a blank document, so it won't do anything. Okay, so I have my cloning out of the way. Let's go ahead and move everything into view there. I'm going to go ahead and add a levels adjustment layer, but I'm not going to make any changes to it. I'm just going to change the blending mode down to soft light, and then reduce the opacity because it's just a little too harsh for my taste. And let's see what's that. Okay, so soft light at close to 30%. That's usually a pretty, a pretty good number. I typically stay in that 30% range a lot whenever I'm doing anything with a soft light or an overlay blending mode, just because it kind of is a nice balance, a nice good range for me. I think I'm going to play around now with the color lookup tool. Now, if you have Photoshop CS6 or CC, then you should have this. It's over here in the adjustments panel. Click on it, and it's, you know, it's, it's not really something that you would use in a lot of photos, but there are ways that you can kind of stylize things, um, you know, to kind of have a little bit of fun with. Now, this three strip look is one that I use pretty frequently. There are a bunch of other ones, you know, like crisp warm, uh, film stock. You can have a lot of fun playing around with the different effects. They're kind of like presets in a way. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with the three strip look. It's obviously a little too much going on there, but it is intensifying those blues, and I do like that. I'm going to change the blending mode to color so it only affects the color in the image. I don't think it was doing much to the tones anyways. I'm also going to reduce the opacity, and I'm just going to kind of move it until I find a good good place for it. And I'm going to toggle on, off and on. All right, I'm going to bring that opacity up a little bit more so we can actually see the effect. Okay, that's nice. Um, 
I am actually going to do some masking though because it's it's making this area a little too bluish neon and I don't like that. I want this to stay a little bit warmer. So I'm going to switch over to my brush tool. I have that mask selected. I'm going to make sure that I'm painting with black over here in the tool panel. And I don't want my opacity to 100%. I'm going to go down closer to 50%. Use my right bracket key to increase my size and just kind of paint. And you can see over here in the layers panel that it's actually, it is actually doing something. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and do this to all of the greens in the image. And because I did that, now I'm actually going to increase the opacity of this layer and see. All right, so I'll just keep it closer to 50%. So I'm going to toggle, I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key, click on the eyeball and to kind of toggle that visibility of the before and after. So you can see I'm really just kind of trying to punch those colors out a little bit as well as add some contrast to the image. Okay, another thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add some more contrast and kind of a kind of a desaturated grungy drama thing to it. So I'm going to add the black and white layer, and then I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to change it to soft light. That's a little softer, and it's obviously a little too harsh. So I'm going to bring my opacity way down, just like everything else. Nothing at 100%. That's my motto. It's kind of an awful motto, isn't it? <laughs> when it comes to Photoshop, uh, very few things are at 100% for me. So so that added a nice little, just a very subtle touch of uh, contrast. One more thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and add a color pop layer. So I'm going to merge and flatten all of the layers, but put them on their own separate layer. I'm going to hold Command, Option, Shift, E, or Control, Alt, Shift, E if you're on a PC. Go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And keep it at around that same. I've kind of kept it the whole time. I've used this a few times in this series, and I usually keep it around 23. So I'll go ahead and stick with that number. I really just kind of want it blurred, so it kind of looks a little fuzzy, but it's not so blurred that the colors are just expanded beyond recognition. Then I'm going to change that blending mode down to soft light. And again, we don't want it at 100%. We want it closer to, oh, let's try 28%, 30%. I might even bring it down a little bit more. Just adds a nice little color pop to that image. Okay, so I think I've got this to a good stopping point, at least in terms of Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and save this and then close it and head back over to Lightroom. So here's my image and let's go ahead and just see a quick uh, before and after. This is the image that I edited inside of Lightroom and then this is the version that I created inside of Photoshop. Now I am going to make a few last changes uh, just because I like to do this. I'm going to actually warm it up a tiny bit and even bring some magenta in there. So I put a little bit of yellow and a little bit of magenta. I'm just going to toggle a before and after. Just wanted to kind of balance out. There's a little too much turquoise happening. I'm going to click, oh I do have that J. I was just going to check to see if my highlights were okay up there because they almost look like they're too white. But I think it's just white compared to the rest of the image. But I think I have my image almost ready to go. I think I see a spot over here that I missed earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up using the healing brush. Just kind of dab it and I'll let Lightroom pick a spot for me to take that from. Let's go ahead and fit that in there. I'm going to visualize spots and see if it finds any more for me. There might be something right there. Yeah, I think there is actually. Let's go ahead and go to one to one. Oh, I lost. There it is. Click on that guy. Visualize spots. Let's go ahead and move around. I think I see one right there. Oh, I do. Look at that guy. Guy was just waiting for me to find him. All right, let's keep moving around. I think they're mostly just going to be visible in the water. So let's go ahead and fit. And I don't really see anything else. All right, I'll uncheck Visualize Spots, get out of that healing tool, go down to Effects to finish things off with a nice subtle little vignette, and toggle that guy on and off, and we're done.